Hi, everyone. Hey, welcome back to Constructive Talks. You know, one of the things we do is community outreach, and we believe that everybody has a voice, um, and that voice is important. And what's more important to get your voice heard than to vote, right? Absolutely. To Absolutely. vote for somebody to be out front for you. Absolutely. Right? And, and not only be out front, but care. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a local, hey, this is a local guy here, man. Hey, he, he loves his communities. He loves, um, I say, volunteering his time to help improve people's lives. Mm -hmm. Right. And because when you work for the government, that's what you're doing. You're volunteering your time. It's not about the pay. It's about the passion. So, sir, introduce yourself and let folks know, um, you know, what what do you do? Yep. Hey, I'm Derek Quarles. I am a candidate for county council here in Greenville, South Carolina, District 25. And uh, I'm just a, a person, uh, as Lee mentioned, I care about this community. I'm passionate about this community, helping people uh, change their narrative. Um, I believe in education, I believe in economics, and I believe that those two things coupled together can change the trajectory of anybody's future. And so I'm excited to be a candidate for county council, and excited to be having this conversation. And you know, it, it takes a lot to run for office. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> First you have to say, I want to do it. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah. And so what made you say, I want to represent the people? So I started my, my career uh, in college as an activist. Uh, Trayvon Martin was killed and I saw, uh, now people say like you can see yourself in Trayvon Martin. Well, I saw myself as Trayvon Martin and it kind of sparked a passion in me that I never knew existed. And uh, I went to my first uh, march and rally down in Florida and, and, uh, and, and got a taste of what that was like, that life. And eight, nine years after that, I was just activism protesting, rallying, organizing with Black Lives Matter all around the country. And I would come back home and I would see all the issues that were happening here locally and they were going unaddressed by elected officials. And I saw as an activist, the way you got things changed were through policy and legislation. And so I started looking at different offices and, and trying to figure out like where the most change needed to be made. And I determined that county council here in Greenville is where I needed to, to lend my voice and, my, and my, my passion. And so that's how I got into politics. Okay. Uh, so what, okay, what district do you represent in? District whether, 25. So, dist it's, so it's Southern Greenville. It's a portion of Malden, Simpsonville, Piedmont, Pelzer, okay. Dunning. Yeah, so it's 19 precincts in this district. Wow. It's a huge area. See, I grew up in Piedmont. Okay. Country boy. Yeah. So you represent, yeah. you know, where I come from, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So let, let's say this right here. Let's say all those people expect you to listen to them. Yeah. So what avenues do you have for them to um, give them the opportunity for you to hear their voice? Sure. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to do quarterly uh, um, town hall meetings. Okay. Because it's 19 precincts I want to do on quarterly and, and I'll travel around the district doing them at different places. Okay. Because if you don't have a car, you can't get across town. Then Correct. I'll do it in your neighborhood and, and you can walk there or, or you know, ride your bicycle there, that kind of thing. The other thing is I'm going to build a team around me of folks who I'll call my precinct captains. So if I can't be at a meeting or if I can't be present or if I got to be at another meeting, somebody's there delivering the message that I want to deliver or, or keep or somebody's calling me back and say, hey, there's an issue open precinct one. This is the issue. And always make sure that my presence is felt so that people don't feel like I'm just there during election time. Now, sir, now you said something there that's kind of it takes trust. Mm -hmm. It takes loyalty for somebody to listen to somebody else and pass that message on Absolutely. to you. Yeah. So, you know, I always say, hey, you know, select folks around you that have skills and talent. Absolutely. Right. So for someone to echo your voice to the folks that you serve, mm -hmm. man, you, it takes some vetting. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Because talk is cheap. Absolutely. Right. So. How, if they want to know when you're going to have your next town hall, where are you going to advertise that at for folks? So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll have a, I'll have, I call it a street team. We'll put out yard signs throughout the district saying there's a town hall meeting on Monday at seven o'clock at so-and-so. Okay. And that way, the people who are not on social media, they'll know when they ride by, when they go into the grocery store, they'll see the sign. Also going to do it on social media, let people know. And then also word of mouth is let people know, like, hey, get this message out. Uh, we're, we're doing this town hall meeting. And then also we have a local newspaper uh, that a lot of older people read. So putting it in their, um, 
quarterly to let people know the meeting is coming up. It's happening, so people are informed. What's it? You know the name of that newspaper? Community Informer. Community Informer. Yes. Okay, everybody. Hey, you hear that? Go to the Community Informer. Yes. I'm sure they have a website. Go there and you know um, allow the communication from your representative to be heard and to participate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me ask you this. I don't know if they ask you this during the campaign. What are some hobbies you have? I get asked that quite a bit. Uh, oh, honestly, you just, okay. yeah. And honestly, you know, it's, it sounds like nerdish, but I mean, I just enjoy helping people. Like, uh, okay. my I, I turned 37 last Saturday. Okay. And for my, my birthday, I got eight guys together, and we went to a, a lady's house. She's a senior citizen. Mm -hmm. she, a tree fell down her yard. It's been there for three years. Oh, wow. It's a tree. And so we went, went out. We went out eight o'clock in the morning last Saturday. We cut down the limbs off the tree. We cut her grass. Her grass was about five, six feet tall uh, because she can't get out and cut the grass. And nobody wanted to cut it because of the tree in the yard. And so we cut her grass. We cut down other trees around mm -hmm. her house. We cut down limbs. I mean, we gave her life, her yard, but life. And for me, that was I enjoyed doing. She could see when she come outside. She could see when she come outside. That's that's she a big deal. She could not see her yard. Yeah, because sometimes people get recluse if things grow up around them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Yep. So let me say this right here is that. So everybody listen now. Listen what your representative is saying. His hobby is helping others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you help others, this is something kind of I talked about in my book series. My bubble opinion is that you don't look for anything in return. Absolutely. Absolutely zero. zero. It is no profit in helping. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Yep. So what do you plan on? Because I'm quite sure the elections. I think you mentioned you had a runoff. I am a runoff. Okay, you're in that. You're pretty confident because you, you, you're you the people's voice. Doing the work. Yes. In that runoff, right? So what are some of the first things that you plan on doing the first few days or so? Of course, building your team. You mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first thing I want to do is have a listening tour. So I want to spend the first month just going around the communities, listening to people, listening okay. to the issues, um, learning the issues. because, And I want to be transparent and tell people, like, I can't, I can't fix every issue. But I want to listen to you, and I'll tell you like if I can if I can help you or not. And if not, I'm gonna help help you until the help is there. Okay. Um, but yeah, just listen to the issues, uh, building a team, um, and then just start implementing the issues. Finding out uh, more than anything though, like the power that you have on county council. I know what I've heard, but okay. I want to experience it for myself, and I want to maximize that power. Like I know people say that you know off, a political office is what you make it, and so I want to I want to make it to where people who in this community feel um that when they put me in the seat that they feel the power that i have um yeah and you won't get lost with the power you have to benefit self absolutely not right absolutely. because a lot of times you know a politician to go in there man get their votes get the office mm -hmm. and they allow the system that operates to enrich mm -hmm. influence them mm -hmm. in their decision making yep. and right? the community behind and lead, hey, the community will be okay yeah Right. They were decent with me. They'll be decent as I enrich myself. Mm -hmm. And, sir, I'll tell you what, that is good right there, you know, because when you don't care for anything in return, you don't care how you help as long as you help. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So I would say, you know, thank you for what you do. Thank you for running. Thank you for having a passion of helping. Mm -hmm. Now, is it anything you want to give folks confidence about in this interview that, hey, this I stand yeah. Firm on this. Absolutely. So one of the things that people have said about me is that I'm a Republican or that I'm being bought by Republicans or that Republicans have funded my campaign. And none of that is true. What I will say is that I've met with Republicans. I've met with Democrats. I've met with independents. I've met with everybody because in this district, it's made up of multiple. Uh, uh, um, it's diverse and political. It's, it's diverse, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I bet with black people, white people, Hispanic people, rich people, poor people, because again, I rep I'll be representing every person, not just a certain po population of people. And so if you see me meeting with somebody that you don't necessarily agree with or you identify with, unfortunately, that's not the world I live in. And so, uh, and so I'm advocating for every community because all of us can do better. And with my help and with me being in county council, I think we'll, we'll all do better. So uh, everybody listen now, that's, that's important. Why? Because I tell you, I'm a military veteran. And you know how many times I had to sit across a table by somebody that could care less about what it, we wanted to do mm -hmm. in other countries, mm -hmm. but we had to mediate and come to an agreement? Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about. Hey, I'm going to come to a mediation because guess what? I can only make somebody do what they want to do. So that mediation is important. And sometimes you got to talk to folks that you totally disagree with. Mm -hmm. 
I get that. Absolutely. And the people should get that. You Absolutely. should get that. But you got somebody that's going to be your voice. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. And we're going to hold him accountable. Absolutely. What do I mean by that? The way you communicate with him is give him a checklist that, boy, he have to stay awake at night and look at yeah. and prioritize because the loudest needs get met first. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So let me. OK, let's say that. So. He already said hey, he's neutral. He just want to get stuff done, no matter the po political affiliation. Mm -hmm. Is it anything that you want to make people smile about before we end this interview? Yeah, I mean, I'm passionate about our senior citizens. They paved the way. They have done the work. They have laid the foundation. And uh, what better way to show them that we appreciate them than by showing up for them and being there for them when we need them. Hey, everybody. Your representative is going to take care of you. We're going to hold them accountable to that. Remember that. We're here at Kingdom Assembly Restoration Church on Grove Road. Pastor Jerry Wilson, hey, he's throwing a big community event outside. Mm -hmm. And your representative, man, that's still running in a runoff, came out to let folks know that he cared. Absolutely. And he's eating the hot dogs and chips, too. And the nachos. Yeah, the nachos. And the nachos. Yes, <laughs> Belly rumble. Yeah. All right, hey, thanks for joining Constructive Talks. We look forward to talking to you again soon. You take it easy. Goodbye. Take care. <laughs>